Hello and welcome to Verbal to Visual. Today I would like to do some iPad sketch noting as I share with you five big ideas from the book Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. In this book, Gilbert shares her thoughts on what it looks like to live a creative life. There's this analogy that she shares, the road trip, that's really helpful in dealing with the fears that inevitably crop up when doing vulnerable creative work. On this road trip are three passengers, you, your creativity, and your fear. Acknowledging that fear will always be there is helpful. As Gilbert says, I don't try to kill off my fear. I don't go to war against it. Instead, I make all that space for it. Here's the key though. You make space for it, but you also put it in its place. Creativity and I are the only ones who will be making any decisions along the way. You're allowed to have a seat and you're allowed to have a voice, but you are not allowed to have a vote. I really appreciate how this approach acknowledges fear's existence while stripping away its power over you. Another idea from Big Magic that I found to be useful has to do with a paradox that folks living a creative life need to come to terms with. That paradox goes like this. There are two approaches that you must take when doing and sharing creative work. Your creative expression must be the most important thing in the world to you if you are to live artistically, and it must not matter at all if you are to live sanely. And at times, you'll have to leap back and forth between these two perspectives in a matter of minutes. For me at least, it's the second perspective, the one on the right, that I need to remind myself of. And in many cases, it has to do with the reaction that other folks have to your creative work. As Gilbert points out, that reaction doesn't belong to you. So you can't put your overall well-being in the hands of strangers whose reaction to your work says more about them than it does about you. In the section of this book that talks about persistence, there's another analogy that I found to be helpful. This one comes from poet Seamus Heaney, and it starts with the idea that a person should not expect to be immediately good at the thing they're working on. Quoting Gilbert, the aspiring poet is constantly lowering a bucket only halfway down a well, coming up time and again with nothing but empty air. The frustration is immense, but you must keep doing it anyway. After many years of practice, Heaney explained, the chain draws unexpectedly tight and you have dipped into waters that will continue to entice you back. You'll have broken the skin on the pool of yourself. This echoes nicely Gilbert's definition of a creative life, which she shared earlier in the book. Acknowledging that we all have jewels deep within ourselves, and to live a creative life means to be on the hunt for those jewels. And it's the hunt, it's the effort, that makes your life creative, not any particular results. In the same section on persistence, Gilbert addresses the inevitable frustrations that come along with your creative work, and how hard it can be to go from having great ideas one day to no ideas the next. But as Gilbert says, frustration is not an interruption of your process. Frustration is the process. And, just as important, how you manage yourself between those bright moments is a measure of how devoted you are to your vocation. Here, I appreciate the holistic nature of Gilbert's approach to living a creative life, that a large part of it is sustaining your body and your mind, giving it what it needs so that it can show up to the creative work in a full way. The last idea that I would like to share here, similar to the paradox that I mentioned a few minutes ago, has to do with the perspective from which you view your creative efforts and the results of those efforts. To quote Gilbert, sometimes I think that the difference between a tormented creative life and a tranquil creative life is nothing more than the difference between the word awful and the word interesting. Interesting outcomes, after all, are just awful outcomes with the volume of drama turned way down. It's sometimes amazing how slight little shifts in mindset, like this one here, can have dramatic effects on the quality of your life once you learn to apply them consistently. And that might be what all five of these ideas have in common. They're about the mindset that you establish as you go about doing your work, living a creative life.
I hope that you have enjoyed seeing these ideas shared in this visual way. I do encourage you to pick up the book Big Magic because this here is a mere sprinkling of the good ideas that you'll find throughout it. And if you'd like to add the skill of visual note taking to your creative toolkit to be able to sketch out the ideas that you're learning in a similar way to what you've seen here, then check out the resources at verbaltovisual.com. You might start with my course, An Introduction to Visual Note Taking, and then go from there. You can find links to that resource and others down below this video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.